in this lecture we will discuss about sustainable building materials so as you know this is one of the most important actually uh, chapters most uh, most important actually lectures and uh, important why because the building materials actually constitute a major portion of like the sustainability impact because material in itself actually forms the largest bulk among uh, everything and uh, it requires a lot of like resources it requires a lot of like uh, uh, energy and uh, it creates like an impact during its lifetime at the beginning of the stages of its lifetime in a, even after like uh, the end of its lifetime uh, life cycle so let's see like a uh, what are the actually tentative like a selection criterias okay so those are like obviously the aesthetic quality is one of the uh, important ones but apart from that we are looking for here like a durability ecological impact embodied energy performance social impact cost non-toxic or whether like a less toxic material or a renewable energy we are looking for like a biodegradability so these are the actually terms these are the actually criteria which have become uh, very uh, important very crucial in the like a uh, in the sustainability actually uh, studies and why that we have discussed separately why they are important so we will discuss more from the perspective of, uh, perspective of materials over here so the fundamental actually principles which are uh, can be actually used we can call them like a, even like a strategies also through which we can actually uh, devise our like a, a guidelines device we can uh, design uh, design uh, accordingly and uh, uh, we can actually fulfill the requirements so those could be like a structural de uh, design efficiency uh, why is structural design efficiency is important uh, in order to reduce the actually wastage of material because uh, uh, usually in the lack of the like a knowledge we may end up uh, uh, spending more where it is not needed or we may maybe we can end up uh, even with the little material where it is, it is like needed so actually a thorough and analytical actually study is needed to uh, analyze the structure before going for the construction of it so uh, in order to actually optimize the efficiency of the resources optimize the efficiency of the materials used in that so structural design efficiency is one of the very important ones uh, as far as uh, the building construction is concerned then comes the energy efficiency well of course buildings consume energy uh, throughout their life and uh, main, mainly during the like uh, their operation stage the consumption of energy uh, goes like a uh, very high so we must actually go for like energy efficiency also water efficiency well water is uh, available in the finite like a uh, uh, quantity so as a like a natural element this is one of the uh, most scarce elements uh, scarce resources uh, in like a today's times in the recent years and we are seeing like a what is what are the kind of a crises which are happening in the like a, in the non availability of water in the like a summer months and uh, those like other like a typical months and material efficiency of course we can save on the bulk we can save on the manufacturing processes we can save on the resources itself so there are several advantages for actually saving on the materials and of course waste and toxic reduction so see like how uh, the rating method of griha green rating for integrated habitat assessment uh, recommends sustainable building materials like a criteria in their like griha framework so the latest uh, griha framework uh, version 2019 has a uh, three uh, actually criterion you can see over here criteria number 19 20 and 21 which talk specifically with the uh, like a material like a sustainability uh, factors so the first one is utilization of alternative materials in the building so uh, what it means over here like we should look for actually alternative materials alternative sustainable materials for like a, the uh, other like a regular materials which uh, are like a energy intensive which are like a, a material intensive which are actually uh, which could be actually toxic in the nature so it talks about you uh, going ahead for the like a, a alternative actually of the uh, those sorts of like a materials and it gives actually a, a good weightage of like a five points over here in its in its like a framework the second uh, criteria which comes over here is the uh, about a reduction in the uh, green uh, actually uh, greenhouse gas emissions like uh, parameters through like a, a life cycle assessment so it uh, emphasizes on the like analysis uh, it is emphasizes on the like a, a environmental impact assessments okay it in, in, in emphasizes on the like a evaluation before going for the execution of the uh, actually uh, uh, project 
So this is uh, one of the very important points over here that we have studied in the life cycle analysis and EIA actually lecture that we have to be uh, very cautious about the evaluation of the building at the design step only uh, before going for the final execution of it. Uh, the last one uh, topic actually talks uh, about here uh, about alternative materials for like external site development. So that uh, has uh, actually uh, got uh, like a two points dedicated for this one. So it, it this also talks about like about the alternative materials for like a uh, outside the building on the site requirements. For example, creating like a boundary walls or maybe creating for like a pavers. You know, creating like a landscape. You know, creating like a other uh, like elements on the site. So those also can be used for with the like a locally available material which can be like an alternative to the like a, a manufactured or fabricated material from the like factories so here if you see like the the, the focus is on like a, a saving on the like a uh, the impacts okay uh, saving on the like a uh, other like a conventional material which are like a, having like a, some sort of like a uh, uh, impact on the like ecology so this is actually purpose of going for the sustainable building materials in the construction so how these like alternatives can be actually evolved so this is a list of actually those like alternative materials which can be actually used as like a main resource material but they are actually a by product they are actually waste of like some other actually product so we can see like we are all familiar of this fly ash material red mud slag unfired like a clay bricks and manufactured sand glass you know and there are several other actually list of materials which can be used as and these are actually being adopted in the recent times in the construction industry as a like a, a alternative material uh, so uh, uh, here if you see in this slide it talks about uh, using uh, like a mainly like a uh, the materials which are like a still available in their like a, a natural like a form natural like a, a condition and which are like a uh, we can say they are not so like a highly or a complex uh, a processed so they can be actually taken care of while uh, like a dismantling while actually uh, disintegrating while actually uh, disposing them at the end of their life uh, life cycle so those could be like a like a paper those could be like artificial stones carbon fibers translucent like concrete rubber modified uh, asphalt plastic recycled bitumen you know silica fumes you know there are several other types of material even like a, a husk also of like a several like a crops you know and a cloth like a, a rayons and uh, fibers available from like a you know discarded actually garment so there, there these could actually find a several applications of it uh, in the whole uh, construction actually uh, material uh, category when we are talking about well how these can be used so this is one actually very uh, interesting example from uh, from india itself here we can see this road actually uh, was uh, uh, constructed the top layer of, uh, of it this road was actually constructed using the actually waste plastic and uh, you can see the uh, hoarding over here which talks about a plastic waste road so there are actually several advantages this plastic is going to uh, land up in the like a landfill so how this can be put to use somewhere so like a, we we spoke like what is the pollution pollution is the actually uh, a wrong place uh, like a, a, a material when a material actually reaches at the wrong place it, it becomes like a polluting actually uh, thing for the like a, that place obviously so why can't this uh, material which is a pollution for the uh, rest of the environment can be put to some use so it has like a user like a higher percentage of like a plastic waste where it reduces the need for like a bitumen by around like a 10 percent increase the strength and performance of the road reduces the cost to around like a 5000 per kilometer of like a single lane road generate jobs for like a rag pickers develop a technology which is eco-friendly improvement in fatigue life of road and uh, better resistance towards the rain water and cold weather also uh, better resistance towards rain water and uh, yeah co cold weather cold situations so th th these are actually some advantages uh, uh, we can have over like a con uh, using like a conventional like a bitumen based or tar based actually uh, road surfaces so why not to have a, like a such like a experiments and we can evolve actually methods and ways to have a, uh, like a such constructions in uh, like a, other places also uh, this is one example uh, you can see over here this is a building uh, in milan which uh, which actually sucks the uh, pollution content uh, part from the like a uh, air from the atmosphere 
and uh, this is known as a, like a smog eating uh, actually machine smog eating actually building so we will uh, look at the details of this building if you see so the cladding of the white uh, sinus building in uh, both highly innovative and like a sustainable the 9000 square meter facade was realized with 900 biodynamic concrete panels developed by uh, ital cementi its uh, tx active technology captures air pollution when the envelope material comes into contact with light which it then transforms into in inert actually salts reducing smog levels in the environment each exterior panel of palazzo italia uh, produced with the style comp technology uh, is unique and the building itself is like a net zero energy building which means thanks to the design team's extensive use of photovoltaic glass and photocatalytic uh, uh, concrete cladding the structure is capable of covering its energy needs autonomously so you can see like how the uh, how interestingly how innovatively the technology is used over here first of all to go for the net energy uh, building concept and second to uh, reduce the pollution from the like uh, uh, air of the like atmosphere so this is one of the uh, beautiful examples which i came across to uh, share with you guys like uh, how we can uh, put to use like a uh, several like a uh, interesting uh, innovative uh, like a uh, uh, exercise innovative like uh, materials innovative like techniques you know innovative like uh, processes to improve all the uh, overall like a uh, sustainability factor uh, so uh, if you see over here the major three resources which are required for like any building construction is the like materials of course energy and the water so these are the three actually major resources which we need uh, and a sustainable building design approach has to consider these three resources in terms of their depletion and the environmental and social impacts associated with their use so we have to take care of these because all of these three are very crucial and all of these three like if you see the volume of it so they were being the uh, like uh, related from the like a uh, uh, buildings being treated from the like a built environment which consumes the largest actually energy uh, from among all the sectors across the world okay so this is one of the actually uh, uh, highly like a uh, potent areas where uh, any sort of like intervention is welcome to save either of these three like uh, important resources of materials energy and water so what are the like uh, environmental impacts of like material use if you see during the past 30 years an increase in understanding of materials and their characteristics have brought to light other less obvious impacts associated with materials which affect people and environments well beyond the uh, building envelope so uh, the potential remoteness of the impacts of the material use makes the link between the cause and the effect so when we like uh, talk about uh, like how like uh, such big impacts are actually coming in the recent times well there is this cause and uh, effect actually method uh, in place which is working uh, to create actually imbalances so by the human intervention by the like uh, human misadventures uh, in the like uh, ecology to destroy actually forest to destroy actually the uh, pure state of like a uh, water streams rivers lakes and uh, pollute the like uh, airs so these are all occurring into uh, like other catastrophic events such as like acid rains you know uh, increased like a temperature wildfires and there are several repercussions you are already like aware of for example if you see over here the use of tropical rainforest timber paneling in the europe you know may result into like, you know some kind of like a catastrophic event happening in somewhere else some some other country so uh, you may be aware of this uh, butterfly effect so the butterfly effect uh, uh, emphasizes the uncertainty and the uh, probability the uncertain probability of like a you know a catastrophic events which may occur even from like a, a slightest of change in the ecological like balance so this uh, puts up this uh, important actually uh, emphasis over here to control the actually causes so that the effects can be actually reduced so the bad effects can be actually uh, taken care of so like uh, amazon is failing, uh, facing uh, deforestation in the recent times and uh, there are uh, consequential not just the uh, uh, environmental impacts but there are uh, impacts on the society also like the people who used to uh, live on these uh, forests who people who used to survive with the help of these forests 
traditionally they have been living there uh, for like hundreds and thousands of years now they are actually forced to move out or they are forced to actually take up, up uh, some other sorts of like uh, occupation practices and uh, their livelihood so this is not just the uh, environmental impact such kind of activities had other like a social as well as economical impacts for the uh, overall like a well-being of this planet so it is uh, uh, very difficult to comprehend and substantiate than more immediate cause and effect relationships such as that between car use and the increased pollution so well there are some uh, direct uh, uh, actually cause and effect uh, things also like as it is mentioned over here like a car which emits like a, uh, a poison, uh, uh, poisonous and toxic gases but uh, there are some other like a subtle and hidden uh, like a cause and effects uh, phenomena also which we are observing we have which we have just explained right now this butterfly effect etc so these are the ones which have actually uh, very uncertain kind of like a catastrophic uh, resultants over a long period of time the impacts associated with materials can be remote with regard to both location and time and they can actually happen uh, like uh, anywhere so for example if there is like a lot of uh, uh, a mining of some uh, some metal or some material at one place may result into uh, you know imbalance in the like a water level imbalance in the like a, a biodiversity of that area and may result into some kind of like a other uh, like a unnatural like activity somewhere else so that actually uh, uncertainty is always over there uh, there are some examples of like the timber might be used like a thousands of kilometers from where the deforestation occurs and then the uh, de uh, detrimental effect of asbestos on uh, health only becomes apparent decades of the contamination takes place so uh, we are all aware of uh, asbestos and uh, some uh, some other types of materials which are like uh, uh, conventionally have been like a part of the construction sector okay they are found to be one of the like a carcinogens so and their impact actually one uh, feels after a longer period of time and uh, that impact actually becomes like irreversible and uh, quite damaging so uh, each and every material needs to be like a studied properly and should be actually uh, understood to have like a lesser impacts actually then only should be approved for like a uh, uses in the design and construction sector the resourcing of the materials their manufacturing processes transport requirements use and final disposition can involve wide reaching uh, environmental and social damage including like a global warming which is very very obvious and universal uh, pollution depletion of natural resources destruction of natural habitats extinction of plant and animal species waste production destruction of communities and health problems so these uh, all of the in the in the recent like uh, years this all of these have actually uh, uh, coming to actually true coming to actually the uh, places around us uh, whether uh, from wherever we belong to whichever state whichever country these kind of like uh, impacts are actually uh, touching on uh, each one's like life in some way or the other to assess these impacts uh, uh, material specific uh, acidifiers must consider the chain reaction and long term effects of using any material even those that may appear unlikely to be associated with negative environmental impacts so it is very under, uh, important to understand actually the life cycle analysis of uh, uh, any such material which we are using in like our industry so material resourcing about this building products are derived from like natural materials usually and that are like harvested or extracted and then processed so the moment actually uh, processing the moment actually this uh, manufacturing gets involved like a factory based manufacturing the products actually uh, these uh, resources actually uh, they uh, come to possess you know a different like a kind of a properties also which may affect our like health and the health of the ecosystem in multiple ways so the first issue to consider is the availability of the like a material resource uh, the risk being that resources may become depleted this is a very obvious fact and uh, leaving future generation without that particular resource and therefore at a disadvantage like a uh, several uh, actually such resources are like a uh, uh, so fast like a uh, harvested they are being actually extracted from the like a uh, nature that it is uh, like a uh, uh, speculated that some resources may actually go uh, completely actually exhausted from the uh, face of the like a planet uh, increased concern about the environmental impacts of mining and resources extraction has resulted in some improvements in these practices increasing uh, number of forests are being managed sustainably and there is a move towards small scale mining in mining in preference to large scale however there is still scope for improvement and by taking these issues into account when specifying materials consumers can help push the market to adopt ever uh, more sustainable practices so this awareness is actually very important to uh, spread between the uh, manufacturers miners you know consumers 
every stakeholder well uh, what sorts of uh, manufacturing processes we can go for well materials are clearly used in their completely natural states this is what we have seen like this is why are actually uh, all of this uh, new age actually uh, these uh, manufacturing and fabrication and uh, like a industrialized way of actually treating materials has come into uh, the picture some preparation or manufacturing is generally necessary to create a usable building uh, building product the impact associated with manufacturing can include pollution to air water and ground and so on uh, manufacturing also generally requires energy uh, which is mainly derived from like a fossil fuels and is associated with global warming and pollution so we can see like at any stage uh, of like a, a products like a, a life cycle there are impacts of uh, like a some way or the other and uh, usually in like a today's like a time that the point is highlighted over here in the first line if you see like we are not using the materials in their like a almost like a natural or near to natural state we are actually processing them we are actually uh, turning them into some other type of like a uh, final product and then we are using it. and this process itself it has become a, a quite detrimental to the like ecological balance at one one end of the environmental impact scale there are like a natural materials these are materials that are found in nature such as like a timber and stone, uh, stone etc and that require minimal processing before use a material with such minimal manufacturing impact is the adobe brick for example you know made with earth and water and dried in the sun a process that makes use of like a plentiful naturally occurring, uh, occurring material uses like a manual labor and the sun's heat rather than burning fossil fuels and consequently produces like almost no pollution always so like we have seen like adobe houses so adobe houses are the best example of uh, uh, utilizing natural resources without actually processing them so whatever processes are actually adopted those are also very natural so the adobe actually material is taken then uh, it is purified then it is like a, a laid into like a, a molds then it is like a sun dried then it is put together with the mud itself and uh, dried in the sun only so it doesn't use as actually any external or like a, a artificial energy it doesn't uh, utilizes any like a industrial processing okay so this is one of the best examples of going with the uh, purity of the material which is abundantly available in the nature well uh, for uh, like a sustainable like material selection there could be some uh, uh, criteria and some strategies like uh, minimizing the first of all the need of the material itself so that we can uh, uh, get rid of the the processing and every uh, like other consequences which may arise uh, later on so building only when it is like a really necessary uh, building like small not very big because with the bigger volume of the building bigger size of the building a huge amount of volume of the material will also be utilized designing for like effective use of the materials designed for durability and for reduced maintenance okay secondly we can go for the this grouping of like using existing materials so that we can uh, increase the longevity we can reduce the production of the new material if we can uh, if the old material is good enough to be used in the place of the like a new materials itself so we can go for the reusing the existing materials we can go uh, for the like reusing existing building components we can uh, use like a recycled materials so these are actually uh, some approaches some strategies through which we can uh, take up our like a design exercises there are some other strategies also through which we can uh, design our like a uh, uh, building such as design to enable like a uh, future buildings and materials reuse and recycling so the designing itself should uh, happen in such a way so as, as, as at the uh, end of the like a uh, life cycle stage the building uh, and its components can go for like a reusing and recyclability like a easily they do not actually uh, should pose like a, a complexity in like a dismantling or like a taking the components out design for flexibility and uh, desirability to maximize the building life so there should be like a flexibility uh, uh, given in the building in the like a design of the building so that it can be used with the multi purpose like application and the adaptation of that building should be like a kept flexible so that it can be used for a longer period of time and can in turn actually give its a return in terms of like a usability increased usability design for durability so that it can sustain for a, like a longer period of time it can keep serving for a longer period of time and designing for like a desirability of course it should be appealing it should be uh, usable for the like a uh, user 
designing for like recycling uh, recycling and to enable the uh, biodegrading of the material so the material also should be like a taken care of in such a way so that they can go for the recycling and if not they should be able to uh, degrade on their own naturally without actually uh, uh, intervention from the like a uh, uh, several like agencies without without for the need of like a again like a further extension at the end of their life cycle stage well uh, uh, th there could be like a some uh, uh, thought processes uh, given for like a material selection uh, by like a specifying renewable material with the short generation cycle regeneration uh, cycles uh, specifying timber from like a managed and accredited sources only for example like fsc accreditation you know managed uh, forest uh, managed forest actually systems and all like uh, the countries of like a uh, canada and new zealand have actually uh, this kind of mechanism in place right now so we can learn from these places and we can evolve actually similar practices in our own country as well we can specify for like a uh, plentiful resources and avoid scarce resources sources uh, specifying like materials mined harvested or extracted with you know we can go for like a minimal impact on the local and global environment we can go for specifying material associated with low manufacturing pollution uh, specifying materials associated with low levels of co2 emissions over the life of the building considering their impact on saving running energy uh, consider manufacturers environmental policies track records and reporting uh, specify materials that do not pollute the indoor air select locally produced materials requiring uh, like a minimal transport so that we were talking about the other day about uh, indirect emissions so indirect emissions uh, uh, for that actually transportation sector is one of the uh, major contributions for the like uh, indirect uh, uh, emissions and one uh, material should not be actually taken uh, very far away from the uh, the place of its like a uh, manufacturing or uh, fabrication in order to avoid the indirect emissions so this is what actually uh, is talking about over in uh, this particular slide material disposal and waste uh, minimization so about this thought if we see like a segregating actually the components of the uh, uh, building you know and uh, uh, converting them into like a, a inert you know uh, material so that uh, they can actually uh, go with the any other like a component any other like a material also you know so segregating like a timber inert metal and soil waste during construction and demolition and ensure their recycling arranging for like excess materials ordered and where possible waste materials to be like taken back by the material suppliers including like recycling provisions in the building so if you see this second point it talks about like a, uh, creating a mechanism where the surplus material where the waste you know if it can be like a taken by the supplier uh, from the like a manufacturing agency so that they can uh, take it into their uh, like a uh, uh, as, as a raw material and they can again make it like a, as in convert them into the a usable product so this we saw like a yesterday uh, like a in, uh, in the previous one of the previous lectures where that uh, carpet manufacturing company uh, was usually uh, utilizing the 100% of its material uh, and uh, for like a reuse and for recycling and they uh, they are actually working for like a creating almost like a nil waste from their manufacturing facility so this kind of efforts are actually laudable and these are the actually critical uh, uh, strategies which are actually required in today's context so material energy and transport uh, on this thing if you see there are some uh, uh, concerns on like uh, uh, these uh, factors also so unlike the example of like adobe construction given earlier most building materials require energy for extraction and manufacturing uh, energy is also required for like a transporting material to the site maintaining it finally disposing of it the total energy used is known as the embodied energy you have uh, uh, already uh, known uh, uh, this fact like embodied energy is the uh, energy which is uh, required for like a sourcing for manufacturing transporting and uh, 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 finishing that product so that uh, all of these stages actually if you combine so the energy required at all of these stages come in a combined manner is called as the embodied energy so by reducing like a uh, energy like expenses on each of these stages we can overall in the sense we can reduce the uh, embodied energy of any product so the total energy used is known as embodied energy energy is still like mainly produced by burning fossil fuels and is therefore associated with global warming and pollution specifying low embodied energy materials is therefore generally desirable unfortunately estimates for the embodied energy of materials can vary uh, depending upon the method used to calculate it and can be misleading embodied energy calculations do not generally differentiate between energy produced with the fossil fuels and that produced by alternative means not associated with co2 emissions they sometimes include the energy for the transport of 
other material to site for their maintenance and disposal and sometimes they do not well so we have to be cautious while cal uh, uh, calculating actually embodied energy this is what be, uh, being talked about over here Ki, uh, this actually doesn't uh, considers whether the the energy uh, used in this actually uh, manufacturing of this product whether it was like a source from like a non-renewable sources or renewable resources or whether it has actually uh, included some energy which was uh, used while transporting it back for the recycling and all that so these are actually minute details which we can actually take care of uh, but it requires actually at attention case to case basis but in an overall sense actually energy is energy and whether it is coming from like a non-renewable resource or a renewable resource as long as it is consumed by that particular product in its manufacturing it constitutes it gets added in the uh, uh, embodied energy of that product uh, about materials in use maintenance of the materials require both energy and materials uh, and is associated with the similar impacts as the construction of buildings albeit on a smaller scale minimizing requirements for maintenance by designing uh, for durability and longevity helps to reduce the life impacts of the material materials can also affect the building uh, users in terms of comfort and health uh, material about uh, materials like uh, disposal the building industry in the uk is currently responsible for like 70 million tons of like a construction and demolition waste every year most of which is sent to like landfills there are numerous problems associated with landfill sites including the uh, use of the land uh, toxic like materials leaching into groundwater emissions of explosive gases sometimes emission, uh, uh, explosions also happen uh, on these like locations and structural like uh, instability of course appropriate site waste segregation designing to enable reuse and uh, recycling and using reclaimed and recycled materials all contribute to diverting waste from landfill and other polluting waste disposal options uh, building design can also encourage recycling of domestic or commercial waste by providing appropriate recycling facilities in the building. Building design can also encourage recycling of domestic or commercial waste by providing appropriate recycling facilities in the building itself. Well, uh, uh, another uh, actually a strategy over here is like a, for designing for like a, a longevity. Well, what is longevity? Longevity means like if we can exp uh, expand the actually life uh, lifespan of any product. So, uh, if you are expanding the lifespan of any product for like, for example, twice, so that, that directly means we are saving at least production of another unit of that same material by extending the lifespan of the, uh, the first material in its place. So, uh, by using the material for like a, a twice of its like lifespan, we can at least save on the one, uh, uh, one unit of that material. It's as simple as that. So, the production of new materials is inevitably linked to environmental and social impacts. To minimize the need of new materials, it is important to make maximum use of the material already in existence. Furthermore, making use of existing materials which would otherwise have entered the waste system reduces the impacts associated with waste disposal. So there are uh, only benefits, there is no harm of actually using this uh, uh, strategy uh, like a design for longevity. Uh, further, uh, uh, some guidance for like designing to enable like dismantling, you know, so these, uh, this is also one of the very important uh, uh, actually uh, stages where uh, once the product life cycle uh, is over of like a for any product. So it goes for like some sort of like a, a dismantling, some sort of like a degradation, you know, decomposition, you know, or some kind of like a disposal. So at that time, the material or that component should be able to be like a get a disassembled properly so that it can be like a, a disposed of uh, the different materials can be disposed of in a responsible way. So, for example, like the, the some uh, things which are necessary to be like, uh, you know, be aware of at the beginning only, like uh, the information. So, so, providing as like a build drawings and a maintenance log, including identification of point of like a, like a disassembly uh, components and materials. Also, identify materials and points of disassembly on like elements. So, how the that product, how the, the, the components of that product are going to be disassembled. So, this information should be given uh, beforehand for the like a dismantling agency. Uh, about access, uh, provide easy and safe access to the building elements and fixing with minimal machinery requirements so that they can be uh, carried out uh, uh, without much uh, uh, hindrance. A dismantling process well simplifying uh, fixing systems enabling like removal by means of small hand tools and hand uh, handheld uh, electrical tools avoiding a specialist plant you know use of like a mechanical rather than chemical fixing providing realistic tolerances for like assembly and disassembly uh, designing joints and components to withstand like a dismantling process you know and uh, further uh, coming down to the hazard because hazard is one of the uh, after effects of like uh, this dismantling and uh, uh, actually disposal actually uh, stage 
so how the hazards can be actually reduced uh, at this stage so make components suitable for like a safe handling and provide means of handling and locating uh, avoid like toxic materials also uh, because this could be like a harmful for the uh, people who are uh, involved at, at this actually work for like a time factor minimizing the number of parts fixing and types of fixings you know allow for like a parallel disassembly of different building elements so that uh, there is a flexibility in terms of like a uh, the uses in terms of like a uh, dismantling in terms of like a recycling etc finally like a guidance for designing to enable the reuse of building uh, elements and alternatively uh, their recycling if reuse is not possible recommends like uh, these are following like a uh, points for example like a uh, uh, reprocessing so use materials that require minimal uh, reworking avoid non recyclable materials such as like a uh, composite materials they are very uh, difficult to get like recycled you know treatments and uh, secondary finishes that complicate the uh, reprocessing such as, such as like a uh, uh, powder coating such as like a uh, lamination so these actually are the uh, uh, an appealing and aesthetical actually treatments and finishing for like a several types of products but uh, in turn they end up actually complicating that product for its like a disassembly and uh, uh, recycling so minimize the actually number of component uh, types ensure that uh, inseparable uh, sub assemblies are from the same material and that uh, uh, components of different materials are easy to separate uh, for like hazards minimize toxic content if toxic content uh, uh, is like a, a unavoidable ensure the ability to release it in a controlled manner make uh, components sized and of a weight to suit the means of the handling and provide means of handling and locating it you know about durability uh, use uh, sturdy and uh, avoid like a fragile materials uh, design joints and components to withstand actually repeated use so that there is no wear and tear so often and at, uh, uh, one can save on the maintenance and operations part of uh, the lifestyle uh, life stage of that product about information uh, provide identification of like a material and component types provide like a product details and insulation instructions so the information has to be a uh, complete uh, uh, from like a end to end to enable actually uh, as a successful and unhindered actually operation as well as uh, a successful and a complete recycling and a disposal of the like any uh, like a building material so that is actually intent of uh, uh, this actually a lecture over here so we can talk about uh, uh, as a, like a final some like uh, approaches to uh, dispose of like uh, these materials in uh, by utilizing actually uh, reusing them by recycling them or even like a uh, downcycling them so uh, reuse actually putting to new use a previously used building component taking from a building or the other source the building component can be made of a single material such as like a brick slate tile timber joist you know pre cast concrete floor etc or more than one material such as like a door with like a uh, iron monjury uh, composite wall panels pre cast concrete foundations you know so it can require uh, no processing or for example like a roof tile also or significant processing or like a paint stripping and finishing doors etc uh, second like recycling so reprocessing a material or component to form the same or an equivalent material or component uh, such as like a metal roofing recycle to make like a new metal roofing or wall cladding etc so they can go for like a recycling or reusing them and then lastly like a downcycling reprocessing a material into a lower grade use material uh, such as like a concrete or brick into like a hard coat timber uh, or a timber into like a chipboards you know so these uh, materials can be like actually downcycled can be uh, can actually become inferior but still can be used into like a, some other sorts of like a uses and uh, applications so that is the downcycling so these are the actually strategies which are impo uh, very important uh, uh, as far as like sustainable building construction materials are uh, uh, concerns and that is why we have discussed over here and uh, with this i would like to uh, come to an uh, end of this lecture thank you all